Welcome to Project 308. My name is Lou Tranche, and that right there is my 1978 Ferrari 308 GTS that I'm restoring for you right in front of your eyes. Anyway, stick around and let's get into it. I've ordered the carpet for the car. Uh, I was saving for that for a bit because I had to order the interior carpet, all the pieces interior, the trunk carpet, and the rear zippered cover. Holy smokes, that was expensive. That was one of the bigger purchases for the car. But it's coming and it's going to be here middle of April. So what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get into the interior of the car and start making it look like a car again. All right, so I've got three kind of switches. Uh, that one's falling apart, that one's falling apart, and that one still looks to be good, but I will test it. Uh, so if I'm looking at my wiring diagrams, if I look at uh, yellow-brown, I go over here. Uh, yellow brown that would appear to be my heater fans speed switch next over I've got this uh, gray yellow there's my hazard switch that's in pieces back over here final switch gray and blue I'm gonna venture a guess that that's my wiper speed switch hmm, it's gonna Test the switch. I got a gray black wire there, and the blue and the gray, and I should be able to use that as the common and switch between that one and that one. These two are joined, so whatever is power is coming in here, it's going to go that way or that way. So I'm going to use the gray with the black stripes as my common. And a warm welcome to episode 13. Wow, how did we get there already? We're starting off with switch identification 101. Making sure this is actually the wiper switch. So the only thing I'm actually sure of is that this is the wiper switch. And that's it. These two other switches um, I'm looking at and when I'm looking up a hazard switch, it does not seem to have this sort of pin diagram on it so I'm a little lost right there still trying to figure that out you know the internet never lies right and everything I see on the internet doesn't look like what I actually have in my hand so while I'm waiting for the carpet to come in and the uh, switches and whatnot I'm going to first work on the shifter mechanism free that up and then I'm gonna get into the gauge cluster because it is a freaking mess yuck, yuck. So this is the reverse switch when the shifter comes over and pushes on that really seized Ugh. but I don't have a wrench narrow enough to get in there that's the locking nut um, I was gonna take that out but hmm, not going as easy as I thought it was gonna be I didn't think it was gonna be in there very tight Immersing this thing, it's already gotten better. Hey, right, so that goes there, that goes there. That sits on top of that. Shifter goes in here like so. That pushes down on that. Kind of locks it in there. And then that drops into there. And that's how you get your motion backwards and forwards. Interesting. Simple, but effective. Wow! 
thunderous. It's... It's... It's burning my eyes! Touch of grease right here. Let's just do the whole thing. It's got to come up there like that. There we go. That's just there. Pop that out momentarily. You know, and that's just the way it is sometimes. Things come apart real easy, but they don't go back together so easy. Go back with it. See if we can't force that over. Maybe, 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 oh, yes, got it. And yes, I forgot to put the bolt in first. Take it back apart again. I'm thinking I may actually have to take this all back apart again when the carpet comes in. But now that I'm an expert at disassembly and reassembly, I don't see it as a big deal. But I probably will take it apart just to kind of clean all this up further and paint it. I'm just not in that frame of mind right now. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Wow, what a difference. It's like night and day. Uh, we've got pieces that are broken. We've got all kinds of bulbs over the place. Uh, these pieces are, nothing's holding these in. It is a tangled wiring nightmare. This little gauge fascia has seen better days. It's bent, gonna have to try and kind of unbend it and it needs a lot of cleanup and love.
Then of course I've got a stud there, but as you can see that one's fallen off at some point. Same thing, stud there, and that one's fallen off. So I got lots of little problems. So while I'm playing around with all these pieces, replacing these, I might as well figure out what bulbs go in here and replace these, upgrade all these uh, bulbs with LED uh, units. If any of you Ferrari 308 owners know exactly what bulbs go in there, which replacement bulbs, I would sure appreciate some help on that one because I've been searching through the Ferrari chat forums and man, there's lots of information in there. Sometimes I just want to click and get to it right away without doing all the legwork. Since we're looking through miscellaneous parts, let's grab the dash. God, I'd like to get that into the car as soon as possible. Trial fit not going so well. I think I'm going to have to drop the steering column to be able to push it in. Previous owner of the car sourced out this dash because it was missing like so many other things on my car. So this side of the dash is actually in really good shape. We've got some problems on this side. Not big problems, but as you can see here, uh, this would have been the backing on this vinyl from ages ago. And it has just been sitting out of the car for so long that the backing has separated from the, the vinyl. So I'm going to have to kind of scrape this stuff off and then re-glue this whole thing. It'll probably be a little bit of work. And I was just about to glue the dash and of course my glue is dry. Okay, so let's move on to something else. Constantly changing gears so to speak shooting in one direction and then waiting for parts get parts and I got one switch but I also got a nice little handwritten note from somebody saying the switch I actually need which is the hazard switch is no longer available from Superformance. Uh, would have been nice if I had got an email saying that because I could have kept looking but now I've got to go scrounging for a, a, uh, a switch now and got to change gears on that and move to something else now while I wait for that. It's like this constant over here. Oh, okay, stop that. Go over there. Okay, stop that. Go over there. Sorting through the shipment of parts, I got a couple switches, so let's get them in the car. Now, from a previous episode, you knew that I was having problems with my brake light switch, and I tried to clean it but it just didn't give me any kind of confidence. So you know what, I ordered a new one. That goes right about there, but as you can see, I have no holes here. They've been filled in, so. Oh, decisions. So I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but that little sort of nipple there, and there's one right over there. That's where the Pinaferina sign used to go through. Hey! Can I borrow you for a sec? See this emblem? It's got to go right here. Look inside there. And you, remember I showed you earlier those that Bondo was coming through right there? See the two little holes, the Bondo holes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here, the question. Do I drill those out? Do I risk it? Or do I just nick those off and use two-way tape? <laughs> if you find yourself a really, really, really small drill bit. I'm sure I can. Or drummel. Something that spins real high speed. I would drill it. He's saying drill it. That's not the answer I was thinking. 
Now, just in case you don't understand what's going on here, not the paint job that my buddy Lawrence just did for me, but the paint job from years ago. Somebody was trying to blank out all the moldings and lights, and they filled these holes with Bondo. And when Lawrence painted the car, I missed the fact that these holes were filled. As you can imagine, I'm not enthralled with the idea of drilling through the fresh paint. You have a drill? I'm just grinding off the, uh, the excess, the, uh, excess uh, thing to make sure the holes are the right length? where I think they should Location? be. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to... I didn't want to drill some holes and fuck up. Yeah, I agree with you. All right, so I'm ready to go now. <laughs> All right, I gotta, I've got a drill bit for that. And it's gotta get it spinning really fast, like you should. And... Okay, go <laughs> Alright, I've been checking out these random images on the internet, and you can see that's a little bit different, but not the end of the world different. But when we come over here, we can see that the holes and the little nipples don't line up. Check it out right there. That one lines up, but that one doesn't even have a hole, and then that one's way off to the left. So, I mean, I can make it work, but I'd have to kind of Mickey Mouse it. Uh, and before I make a mouse at all, I'm going to try and see if I can find something a little bit closer. <laughs> Look at you. You made it this far. You rock. Thanks for watching and subscribing and commenting, all that stuff. But if this is your first time here, you might want to start at the beginning. Right here. Thanks. Catch you next week.